When you first see a wreck, I think you're sometimes taken back by the amount of sea life, marine life. The Yongala off Townsville is a spectacular dive. When we first dived it in 82, I thought we were on a, on, a, on a reef. We were going, where's the wreck? And we're actually on it, and it was just spectacular. Thousands and thousands of fish. I think then you start thinking past that and thinking about the people that were lost on the wreck, which is really sad. I mean, people, no survivors. People in town waiting for them and that sort of thing. Maritime archaeology is a bit like detective work. You do a lot of research and you do eventually get out in, into the field and you don't always find what you expect. And, you know, based on the experience of your, of your team, you analyse what you've found. And sometimes you don't always get the wreck you're looking for. I mean, we've had occasion where we found the wreck and we thought, wow, this is it, that's fantastic. And it's turned out to be a, a totally different wreck. But that's exciting in itself. I think I was attracted to maritime archaeology from about six years old and uh, was always interested in shipwrecks. And shows like Costo's great works, you know, his great documentaries, really excited me. I've spent most of my time working on maritime heritage in Queensland, particularly the Barrier Reef, uh, but I have been working overseas. I think the most rewarding project that I, I've been on was the recovery of the remains of four men from a plane wreck in New Guinea. I worked with the RAAF. There was a team of six guys, uh, flew into New Guinea, uh, and we went on a vessel up for two days up into the north, up into the Louisiades, to an island called Cow Island. And in 18 metres of water, there was a uh, Beaufort bomber, and we excavated it and we recovered the four remains and uh, had them reinterred at Bitter Parker Cemetery in Rabaul. In Queensland we've got about 1400 wrecks, roughly, and about 800 of those are in the marine park. So that's a significant amount of uh, shipwrecks and heritage we have here. In this line of work you do spend a lot of time in the office, but you do also get out. And you're working with like-minded people who are just into maritime history and it's exciting. We get on an expedition and you never shut up. I mean, you're always talking about maritime heritage and you, know, you hear about who Jar found this and, you know, what do we do with this and what do you think this is? You know, when we do find a rag, there's often questions in there where you're looking at an artefact and you're wondering what it is. You sit down with some very smart people in their field and nut it out. And it's, that's an exciting part of it, I think, is getting a mystery and cracking it. One of the most significant ones is probably the Pandora, sunk in 1791. It was a vessel that was sent to get mutineers off the bounty and it wrecked in the northern Great Barrier Reef. And excavating that wreck is probably one of the most exciting things I've done. I think the interesting part about excavating a shipwreck is that you can actually step back in history. You can look at how people lived in those days. I mean, we, we do have some history, a fair bit of history I suppose, but when you're back there and you've actually got the artefact in your hand that someone used 200 years ago and it's hardly moved from where they last used it, I mean that's exciting stuff. It tells us a lot about how people live. Our maritime heritage is, is a fragile and irreplaceable resource and we really need to look after it. <laughs>